in some cases criminal for adoption. You know, in Colorado we call that kidnapping. I don't know how I can defend that. This is what the family does with it once in this family has to do it once they I mean they're the family. And they want them, they want them and they won't let them in. That's so hideous. It's it is it's the worst thing I've ever seen in life. I've been alive long enough to see a lot of bad things. Uh, all I can say is that this country has been through horrible times before. We have done horrible things before. I think it is our duty, our obligation, again, to, to go back and not just go back to where we were, but to rebuild better than we were. And, and that is the only thing we can do that honors the memory of of those kids and, and so many people. I mean, if, if you look, but well, don't get me started. I mean, I think the, one of the most important, well, I think the most important thing a president does is the most important aspect of being president is the role as commander in chief, right? The charge of the safety and security of this country, to a certain extent, the world. And I can tell you the first thing I wouldn't do is I would never denigrate and ignore the advice of the most experienced intelligence and military officers in the world. The second thing I would never do is alienate and dismiss the, our, our, our allies of the longest standing, like NATO. I mean, there are 25, you know, uh, strategic alliances that we have with, our, with groups of countries around the world. That is our strength. And the fact that the President Trump is turning away from it and that some of the other Democrats running for president are, are turning away from it. It, it, it makes our country less safe, not more safe. Those tariff wars, I mean, there is no question. I, I've talked to economists at six different universities. Everyone, I mean, there's, there's no example in the history of the world where a tariff war has a winner. Both sides end up coming out worse than they were before. But we should, and we, we can't let China cheat on their international agreements. We can't let China steal intellectual property. But you don't start a tariff war. You build the relationships around the world to put pressure on that country to obey international <laughs> agreements, right? The, the intellectual property has value and has to be protected. That's what TPP was doing. I'm not saying TPP was perfect, and there are winners and losers, and we've got to protect the losers, and, and we've got to make sure that those agreements are fair. And some of the, you know, NAFTA had been touched for 25 years. I agree that it had to be reformed. But TPP was our way to keep China boxed in. Now, China's going out and doing whatever they want. They're, they're, they're building infrastructure in South America, and Africa, and all across Asia. It's going to put us at a disadvantage. Our, us and, and, and our businesses at a tremendous dis disadvantage for decades. And I think they'll, those are the kinds of things that we've got to rebuild as rapidly as we can our relationship with all the other countries in the world. It's not just for economic reasons, it's not just for security reasons, it's for you know, climate change. What we do here to fight climate change isn't going to matter if we can't do it in India and China and South America, Brazil, uh, what we do around public health, right? There's going to be pandemics. People fly everywhere so fast. Some the, there's going to be someday an epidemic like Ebola or something worse, where we're going to have to have constant engagement, contact with every other country, and have a, have a good working relationship with everyone. But the Earth is too small, and we're too interconnected to be having these tariff battles, and everyone's an enemy, and, the U.S. is so strong that we're going to do everything by ourselves. We are the largest economy by 5x in the world. But that doesn't mean our long-term security is turning our back on the people who want to help us. Yeah.